and, and copy it over there. In other words, I'm going to tell him to generate another string. And at this point where he did BC10, I'm going to tell him, don't do BC10 this time. Do this instead. That's how I get this loop. And after he's done doing that, I can tell him, do it again here. And I can keep telling him to, to take this bigger subtree and put it in place of the smaller subtree. And that gives me longer and longer things. But before I tell him to do it many, many times, let's see what happens when he does it just once. OK, so now imagine that he actually did it, that he glued this thing right over here. That this is sitting here instead of this. Now let's try to read off the string that the grammar generates. There's going to be a bunch of parts to it, and I want to identify what they are. Let me put it, uh, put it here. We have the 1, 1 part that sits outside of the whole thing. And we have the 0, 1 part that sits outside of the whole thing on the other side. So 1, 1, and I'll put 0, 1 here. Inside here, we used to have a 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. I'm going to write that in because it's going to change. We used to have a 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, this isn't outside, this is inside. There's only a single 1 on the outside, and there's a 0, 1 on the outside here. Thank you, Chris. So I got a 1, a 1, 0, and a 0, 0. What happens when I put this in place of the middle thing? Let's write it out and see. Let's first just write it out. Instead of 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, what do I get? I get 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Say it out loud. 1, 1, 1, 1. Did I do it right? Let's read it off. I'll read off the whole string. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Let me stop for a second. Does everybody see what I'm doing? I'll do it again. We're taking out this piece and we're putting this piece in its place. Right? And now we're reading the new string that it generates. So there's 1, 1 on the outside, followed by 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, followed by 0, 0, 0, 1. All right. What happened when we did this? Let's identify things that stayed the same and things that changed. This stays the same, doesn't get touched, and this stays the same. Nothing changes there. What's more, you see this little middle section here? That stays the same. How come? Because it still exists in this replacement. So what got changed? This part here, the left part of the big piece, not the middle part, not the part that's under the duplication, but the left part, that got doubled. And the right part got doubled. So this stayed the same. The one zero in the middle stays the same. This stays the same. This guy got doubled. This guy got doubled. 1 turned into a 1, 1, and 0, 0 turned into a 0, 0. That's a duplication that occurs. It's not obvious when you stare at it until you actually do it once and watch the substitution and check. But if we did it again, the same thing would happen, except this would turn into triple 1s, and this would turn into 6 zeros. That's if we did it again. So this is a different kind of pumping, but it's pumping nevertheless. Instead of there being one loop in the middle that gets pumped an arbitrary number of times, there are two loops on either side of a fixed spot in the center. 
And those two loops get pumped simultaneously an arbitrary number of times. It's a different kind of a pumping, but it's something that still gives us a handle to prove certain things are not context-free languages. We're going to do examples of this. We're going to write it up formally and try to finish this whole topic before we are done today. So let me stop for a second. The logic so far is really important to, to get it down. And after this, it's going to become more, more mechanical and more example-oriented. So let me stop here for questions. Anything along the way here? It's a little complicated. What can I go over again? Why isn't it enough that you have a simple recursion in there? To you mean that I can go forward, A goes to B something, B goes back to A something? Yeah. It is, more or less, enough. That's my short answer. <laughs> it, it is more or less that. This, the way the puppy lemma works is that is that you have to have these duplications on any string that's long enough. So just because there's a recursion doesn't mean you have to use that recursion to get a long string. But if a string is long enough, then there's going to be some recursion used in order to have gotten to it. That's basically what this is saying. Yeah, but so it I is guess, kind I of the, the same. The question is, why isn't the fact that you can recurse even if on any given string you don't have to? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Why isn't the fact that you can enough to get the pumping property? Well, it, I think it is enough. That's what. Well, then I don't, I guess I don't understand why you why go through all this trouble? need a very long string, for example, or... Oh, because the recursion might, it might be a long way before you get to the, A might go to B, B, and B might go to C, C, and C might go to D, D, and D might go to A, A, and then, and then yeah. each of those is going to, it's going to take four steps to get that recursion, but the string you've built in doing that is 16 symbols long. Right? So there's nothing wrong with the way you're thinking of it, except it still implies long strings before you actually hit that recursive loop. If you have something like, right? Yeah. Because each time you go to the next stage, you are d got to get rid of all these symbols. So for the purposes of merely demonstrating anything with this, then you need to think of it that way. Right, but also, well, there's other issues too. It, the way you're thinking of it is you're kind of going forward to find this recursion. So like you would use these two where A doubles for the first time. And I'm kind of going from the bottom. The reason you want to go from the bottom is because, well, I should hold off because I don't want to say something that I don't mean, and, and I haven't thought about what the real issues are going forward rather than going from the bottom. But let me think about it, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll see. Because I thought I had the right reason why you wouldn't go forward, but I'm not well, sure. If you, well, That's if a good you question. Went forward, and the first symbol happened to be the one that was repeated. You'd be like looping on your entire. Yeah, but video. I'm not sure what's wrong with that. Um, there's something nice about going backwards and going here, because then when you do the resubstitution, you get these duplications showing up here. And I'm not sure what happens if you start in the other direction. Maybe it would be fine. Like the part that loops, the part that repeats would be like inside the string. I, that's my guess. I, I think you're right. I think that if you start from the top, you don't get the repeating coming where you want. And it's not exactly what you mean. But, be, but I don't want to say it because I didn't check and I'm not sure. And, and it's a good question. It's certainly something that you might think about. You can hardly see this blue, huh? Can you like blends in with the board. Other questions about this? All right, so this grammar really satisfies the pumping lemma. And as you know, I know that this string is in the grammar, and so is 1, one to the 4th, 1, 0, 0 to the 8th, 0 to the 1. I can keep pumping these two sides up simultaneously as long as I want. And I know they're going to be generated by that grammar because it corresponds to a repeated substitution of this larger tree into a sub 